Good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be reading from Titus 2, 3 to 5 in the ESV. <clears throat> Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Now, the older women also need to be that, not just teach that, um, because they need to be living what they teach. <laughs> and I'm one of those older women, in case you didn't figure that out, okay? All right, we're going to look at the meanings of some of these words, okay? Older women are to be reverent. Okay, to be reverent is respectful. It means to be humble, to show consideration and regard uh, for someone or something. Um, uh, basically, it's the opposite of being mocking, un, uh, thoughtless, and um, just generally uh, nasty. <laughs> You know, if we're reverent, um, we're, number one, we're reverent to God. We're respectful of God and of his word and of uh, his teachings. And um, they we're obedient to the Lord. Um, but we, we are not people who are crude uh, or who say nasty things. Um, uh, but we, we are respectful. But, um, but respecting others does not mean we compromise truth or righteousness or holiness in order to show them respect um, because we're, we are to be reverent with our Lord and and to obey him. Um, okay, um, older women, and this isn't just older women. I mean, they, they, these are qualities that all of us should, but should have, but they, they break them down sometimes in the scriptures and define them by age or uh, whether male or female, but uh, most most of the things they're describing apply to male or female. I mean, these are qualities that all Christians should have. Um, okay, so they're not to be slanderers. And if you slander someone, it's an action or a crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. It's cruel, it's hateful. It's basically doing this on purpose. It's a, it's a crime, you know, you're doing it on purpose. You're saying something about somebody else you know it's absolutely not true, but you're saying it purposefully to damage the other person's reputation, and that is just horrid because, you know, people say things about other people that are not true, and, and so many people just believe people because they said it, and then they make judgments about those people you know, based on what that person says, and and it can uh, it can really kill somebody. Really, literally, some people may even commit suicide because of what people are saying about them that's not true and how they're being treated. You know, so don't ever slander anybody. Don't you know? There's just it's just horrible. Okay, um, and then it says. Uh, not slaves to much wine. Well, to be a slave to wine is to be addicted. I think we understand what addiction is. That's um, which Jesus died to free us from our slavery to sin. So there's no Christian should be addicted to sin. You know, um, some people are sex addicts, you know, and so they're addicted to pornography or they're addicted to uh, having extramarital affairs, or they're addicted to going to prostitutes, or, or all sorts of ways that people can be addicted that way. Some people are addicted to alcohol, um, and they 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 have feel like they have to have a, a drink or several drinks, you know, uh, every day, and um and they the alcohol makes them, you know, lose control and, and lose um, sharp mental faculties and people do very strange things, you know. Um, ad addiction is when something else is controlling our lives 
other than God, you know, some people say you're addicted to God, well, that's a good thing if we're addicted to God, you know, and to his word, um, but we don't want to be addicted to any sin, all the scriptures teach that if we are, if we make sin our practice, that means you're addicted to it, that you don't have eternal life with God, it doesn't matter what you've confessed with your lips, and we need to take those those words in the scripture seriously. Um, okay, so um, they are to teach what is good. So women can be teachers. They could be teachers of the scriptures. Uh, as far as the scriptures are concerned and God is concerned, women should not be in a position of authority over men to where we are instructing men and to where we have that power and authority to to make them do what we say you know but the scriptures also teach that her, her, his daughters will prophesy and to prophesy is to proclaim the word of god you know so uh, there's nothing that uh, prohibits women from preaching basically you know from proclaiming the word of god but we should not be pastors or elders you know or anybody in in position of authority in the church uh, over men Unless there's a good reason to be, such as there's a shortage of men or there's a shortage of godly men who meet the qualifications. And so women may have to step in in those cases. But generally speaking, women should not serve in positions of uh, teaching men in a position of authority over those men, you know, to, to, to tell them that they have to do something and then, then they can actually have the authority to enforce that. Um, but women can prophesy, which is to preach, which is to proclaim the word of God. And um, so just letting you know, there's a difference between those two situations. Um, so so women can, can share the gospel. We're all supposed to share the gospel and women can teach the scriptures. Um, uh, and, and, and not just to other women, you know, if a man wants to listen to a woman, you know, and that's his prerogative, he's not being forced to, she has no authority over him, you know, like, there are men that watch these sometimes, or, or read the devotions the Lord gives me to write, no, I'm a, no authority over anybody, they, they do that of their own free will, and so, you know, that, that is perfectly okay, um, okay, so, we're to teach what is good. We are to teach the, the scriptures in, in uh, under the authority of God. We're to teach them according to the context of the scriptures in truth and in righteousness. So we're not supposed to be people who just um, pull scriptures out of context and make them say what they don't say. Uh, we should make sure that we are good students of the scriptures and that we correctly handle the word of truth to the best of our understanding. Um then it says to train young women to love their husbands. Like I said, you know, we don't just train other people to do these things, but these are things we also need to do because we should be leading by example. But to train younger women to love their husbands. Okay, to love our husbands, to love with this kind of love is a godly love. And it prefers what God prefers. It prefers to live through Christ and to do his will. It prefers what is godly holy, righteous, morally pure, upright, honest, and faithful. So when we love our husbands, we are not going to be doing anything sinful. Uh, and, and that also goes to the thing of being submissive to our husbands, which um, I have a definition for that. Uh, submissive, ready to conform to the authority or will of others meekly obedient but it's also yielding and accommodating you know basically the, the the husband is to be the one in authority in the home but the woman should never never um obey sin you know if, if, a, if a husband is trying to lead his wife into sin then we do not do that because loving our husbands is doing what is godly and holy and righteous and morally pure and upright and honest and faithful. So we're not going to sin to please our husbands, but we should be submissive to them. And that doesn't mean that they rule over us with an iron fist and that we are like slaves. That's not the intention. But we should be yielding, you know, if we have 
if I have an opinion and my husband has an opinion, you know, I will yield to his opinion as long as it's not against the word of God and not against, you know, what is morally pure and, and honest and like that. And I will yield to his and give preference to him. And that's really, you know, what it means to give preference. And um, because somebody has to be the boss and the man that biblically is supposed to be the boss. Okay. And I know it doesn't always work that way for a lot of different reasons. Um, but I'm not going to go into all those exceptions to the rules, okay? <laughs> um, and then it says, um, okay, to be self-controlled. Uh, if somebody is not self-controlled, they, they, they are out of control. So self-control uh, needs to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. This is not us exercising how we want to live our, by ourselves. That's not what it means. It's the opposite of being wild and out of control without restraint. So self-control just means exercising restraint and modesty and self-discipline. So we're not wild and out of control people. Um, then it says to be pure. And to be pure is to be unadulterated, to be wholesome, to be unpolluted by the, the sin in the sinful world. And also means to be genuine and or not phony, um, working at home. I look at working at home as we're caring for the needs of our family and household and home. For there are a lot of women uh, of necessity need to work outside the home. But as long as they are taking care of the needs of their family and their household, and they're not neglecting their family, they're not neglecting their household, I see no problem with women working outside the home uh, out of necessity. Um, because especially at today's prices, you know, there's a lot of women there, there, a lot of families have to have dual incomes just to be able to pay the bills and um, to feed their, to feed their families. Um, okay, so um, that is, uh, and to be kind, to be kind is, is not to be fake, <laughs> and it's not to lie. Uh, lies are never kind. A lot of people lie to people and they say they're being kind. That's not kind. Speaking the truth in love is kind. Lying is not kind. Um, but, but we need to do all of these things here in order that the word of God may not be reviled because we need to live uh, a, a godly life that God has called us to live and to be godly examples uh, to other people so that the word of God will not be reviled. Okay. All right. That's the encouragement for today.